Tom, I'll just introduce you. So, Tom, Tom, if I remember correctly, you were a journalist once too, and then you are now that you're a CEO. Is that right? You moved into a tech company, you became a tech tech entrepreneur. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I run a company called Growth Intelligence. We track the performance, the activity of millions of businesses in real time using their digital signature. So that's the information that they give out about themselves on the internet. There's lots of it. People give out a digital signature, and businesses do as well. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what that means, and then how our clients use this digital signature to grow their businesses. So growth intelligence is all about destroying scattergun sales. So for the past 20, 30, 40, 50 years, the primary way of marketing to hundreds or thousands of businesses um, in a you know, relatively short uh, period of time was to use marketing lists. So you can go to a credit reference agency and get marketing lists. So Experian, Dun & Bradstreet, these sorts of people will sell you lists of companies selected by SIC code, perhaps, um, their size of their most recently filed revenues at company's house, that sort of thing. Now, one of the problems with this is that that's very broad. So can I get everyone, has anyone got a marketing approach from a business in the last week or so? If you could just put up your hand, if any sort of business has approached you for any sort of marketing purpose to sell you something in the last week or so. OK. So put your hands down. Sorry, keep, keep them up for now. And put your hands down if that information was highly relevant, exactly at the right time, and the person calling you knew exactly what you were like and what you needed and what you wanted. OK. So you get the picture. Everyone's still got their hands up. So the problem with marketing lists is that you have to get telesales people to call hundreds and hundreds of companies before you hit on the right company, the company that's just ready to buy for you from you at that moment. So with growth intelligence, just to get the, the number out there first, our clients are able to get 250 times accuracy on the focus of a marketing list so that they're calling fewer people and getting better results. Now, the problem with previous marketing lists was that they were based on SIC codes. Now, SIC codes, standard industrial classifications, is the way that governments and credit reference agencies and banks and insurance companies segment companies. And actually, they price risk based on this. So your standard industrial classification is what you file with companies' house when you register a business. So when you register a business, as lots of you, I'm sure, have or will do at some point very soon, um, you have to select from about a couple of thousand SIC codes. Now, generally, you don't, you don't find the one that's relevant to you because they were last updated in 2007. If you're a cyclotron manufacturer, and by the way, no one's manufactured a cyclotron since the 60s, you can find an SIC code for you. But if you work in anything to do with green energy, or if you're a hedge fund, or if you do pretty much anything in digital, if, you, if you're in computing, or you're in, you build databases, anything like that, you won't find what you're looking for. And so you have to file yourself as other. So our business, I'm very sorry to say, is filed under other service activities, along with 20% of the UK economy. So growth intelligence is all about real-time intelligence. And I'll talk a little bit about what that means. Growth intelligence looks at the digital signature. So a digital signature is the email traffic that a company is receiving, the web traffic they're getting, the amount of uh, the number of people that are working there on LinkedIn, the amount of stuff that goes in and out of a port anywhere in the world with their name on it, the amount of property they're currently renting, uh, the number of computers they've got connected to the web, a whole range of different things which goes into building up their unique and ever-changing digital signature. Now, growth intelligence mines all of this data and uses machine learning to say something about the state of that company today. The system also reads hundreds of thousands of news articles a day and looks for mentions of the company name in that news article and then goes one step further and classifies this event as being about an acquisition or it's about uh, an investment or it's about... Um, a, uh, a startup company, or it's about a company launching a new product or going overseas. And then we go one step further and then work out when this event happened. So it might have happened in the future. So potentially, the company you're looking at, they have announced that they're going to launch a product in two months' time. So growth intelligence picks out that event and flunks it in the, in the future. So this is a view of one particular company, Chesapeake Limited, in growth intelligence. And you can see there are events coming up in the future. Now, what you'll also notice is that this company has filed turnovers at Company's House once a year for the last 15 years or so. But since 18 months ago, I don't know if this company has taken over the world or gone bust. 
So using traditional methods of, of segmenting companies, all I have is their company's house information. That information is on average 16 months old. If they're a public company, I might have six month old data from quarterly reports, but that's how all the data is. Now, that's a big problem. In the last three or four years, companies have started changing very fast. One of the reasons I started this company, I was working for a business intelligence firm, and Google approached us and said, can you tell us how fast Groupon are growing? And the company had to say, I'm really sorry, but actually we, we can't. You know, come back in three years' time, we'll be able to tell you. They're a private company in the UK. They've just started up. They don't have to file anything at company's house for another 21 months, so we have no hard data at all. And in fact, Groupon went and listed on the stock exchange before they filed anything at company's house. And so Google went away and did it themselves, and I thought that was very, very interesting. So I left the business and started, started this company, and now Google is a client of ours and has been for a couple of years. Now, to work out what a digital signature means is, is very difficult. For a human, a human being could go and get lots of the information that we, we go and get. But what's hard is turning that into something that, that means something. So for that, you need a really good classification system. Now, as I mentioned, the way this has been done previously is by the company self-selecting. So they say, I am in this SIC code, and that's what I will have forever, and I promise you I'll never change. If you're an insurance company, that's how you price risk. And if you're a bank, that's how you identify clients. Um, the way growth intelligence does it is to look at the language that a company uses about themselves. So we look at their website, we look at the press releases, we look at the patents, we look at their white papers, um, we look at their um, information about their products and services online, product reviews, etc. And we build what we call a related document set around that company. And then we pull out words and phrases and technologies and people and places and things, entities, from this document set and work out how relevant this particular entity is to this business. So, for example, if you're, if you're a business that uses words like kitten and puppy and injection and operating table, then you're probably a vet. And if you're using words like fracking and drilling and oil, then you're probably an oil and gas company. Um, so we classify you by your sales process, so how you sell, you're selling on subscription, a la carte, pay as you go, rental, et cetera. Your product type, what is it that you're actually delivering of value to your clients? Your sector context, and of course companies can be in multiple sectors, and your client type, so are you selling to businesses or consumers? And this allows us, with all the extra entity information we have about you to group companies by how similar they are to one another. So rather than just putting companies into buckets, we can say that this company is 20% similar to this company, but 90% similar to this company. So here's 1,000 companies that don't have an SIC code at company's house, or it's an other SIC code. The favorite is 7487, other business activities. Very useful one, that one. Um, using growth intelligence, it's latently clustered these companies by how similar they are to one another. That's the language that people use about them on the web and the language that they use about themselves. So you can see, for example, that previously, a bank or an insurance company looking at uh, companies in this, in Kent, actually, there's a 1,000 companies in Kent, would see Kent County Cricket Club up the top right-hand corner there in exactly the same way that they would see LX Engineering, which is a construction firm. So previously, they would see all of these companies as just one, and they'd have to write risk, they'd have to underwrite risk in exactly the same way for all of them, unless they go and interview every one, which is very time consuming. With growth intelligence, you can latently cluster them. Now, there's a group of companies I've removed from here, which are companies that the bank definitely did not want to do business with. They also had an other SIC code, but they were doing things that the bank shareholders didn't want to be involved in, things like high street money exchange, which is associated with uh, money laundering, etc. So using growth intelligence, you're able to go up and draw a line around, these are my favorite clients, and these are companies I don't want to go anywhere near, and find me more like both of them so I can be more informed. The growth tracking in real time allows us to identify companies that are growing very fast, so the, the, the new Groupons, the companies that are bursting through. And using this technology, this is a map of the fastest growing companies in London. And so we can see there's a very hot, hot bubble just over Canary Wharf, which is great because it's where we're based. Um, and obviously there's Tech City over there on the, on the right-hand side, but there are also very large other clusters. So this is how it works. Growth intelligence learns who you like to do business with. I, um, it, it fits you like a glove. If you're a salesperson and you really like selling to a certain sort of business, it's like Amazon recommendations. It learns who you like to do business with and then recommends more people who are just like this. So you start following companies and then it's a bit like Last FM. If you're listening to a Last FM or Pandora internet radio station, 
There are some tracks that you really love, and you click the heart button. That's a bit like growth intelligence. And then we take this information, we look at a pattern of behavior that led up to that sale. So if, you're, if you've got a CRM system, it mines your CRM. If you don't, you just follow companies. And then it finds other companies that are just like them. So it finds other companies that are coming up to a similar pattern of behavior. So let's say if you're uh, a big bank, and let's say you're a big bank that really wants to find companies that are trading abroad because you're the international bank, right? Not naming any names. Um, but looking at using growth intelligence, you're able to find companies that are just starting to export abroad. So at the point at which this three-week window when you've just started to send something abroad or you've sent some people abroad, at that point, the bank can phone you up and say, we can give you a letter of credit, we can give you a, an export guarantee, we can give you a better exchange rate into Dubai, and we can give you a man in Saudi Arabia who can sort out all your sourcing problems for those metal pipes that you use. Um, growth intelligence will learn that pattern. They look for other companies in the universe that are coming up to that, pat uh, that point right now, so you can approach them during that three-week period. And we believe that this digital signature is going to be really important. In, in three to five years' time, we think this is how, how banks and insurance companies and large technology companies and telecoms, any large B2B organization, is going to make real-time decisions about pricing and risk and sales. I've described some of what uh, digital signature is, and there's, there's a whole lot more to it. Uh, my co-founder was from BAE Systems Detico, which is a... a um, they use very large-scale uh, uh, data analytics to track submarines. So the project he was working on when I, when I met him, they would drag microphones behind a boat and listen to the sound of the water and work out where the submarine was. I said to him, we're going to do the same for businesses. We're going to listen to the sound that companies make on the web and work out what their state is right now. So just one more slide, really. Um, we're doing lots of very interesting things. We are working with the London School of Economics to work out how many uh, technology companies there are in the UK. It's a really kind of naive problem, but very difficult to solve with current techniques. So the government has some estimates about how many technology companies there are, and they make policy based on this. But actually, using growth intelligence, we can find that companies who are using certain technologies, and therefore, according to some, um, some people, should be technology companies, are significantly, there's a significantly larger number of them. So in fact, 12% larger than the best government data. And that report's coming out very, very soon. Our quadruple classification system allows you to understand in a value chain network. So when, when we go to a bank, they, of course, have lots of transactional data. And being able to understand which, which types of businesses trade with other types of businesses is very, very interesting. Because we're not classifying companies just by their set. Let's say you're a company that cleans oil rigs. You put yourself in the SIT code for cleaning or for oil and gas. Well, using growth intelligence, your product type would be cleaning, but your sector context might be oil and gas and maybe also cleaning. Um, and so that product type allows you to work out which sorts of products are flowing through the economy and which sorts of volumes in what sort of way. We believe this digital signature has the potential to create a new index of production. In, in a tertiary um, industry economy as we are, it doesn't make sense that every time there's something on the news saying that uh, the economy has shrunk or grown, they put a journalist in a factory that's making nails, because that's only 20% of our economy. A much greater percent of our economy is financial services and tertiary industry, and that stuff's very, very difficult to count. But using a digital signature, we can work out what the production rates of different parts of the economy are, including those that are in the tertiary sector. So we work with a number of clients. They're all, what they have in common is that they're identifying fast-growing businesses and finding companies at just the right point to engage. Uh, it could be a sale. It could be some other sort of engagement. We're also being used by 75% of the major retail banks and the top two uh, equity um, search uh, departments in some of the investment banks. So that's my contact details. Thank you so much for listening. I think we've possibly got some time for questions. Good. Thank you very much, Thank you. Tom. Can we have some questions? My name is Sabine McNeil, and my company is a startup called 3D Metrics. And I'd like to know whether you are actually mining the data of all UK companies just for your few particular clients? We are. Yes, we are. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks. I'm Jo Lynn, and I was interested in um, you talking about your pickup on pub, um, press releases. Uh, does that mean we have to be very SEO conscious and, and use very good keywords, or does it not matter? 
so I think that's a very, very good question. I mean, one, one of the questions I sometimes get is, don't people fake it? Don't they work out what a digital signature looks like? I mean, at the point at which we're so big that people actually bother to try and game our system, I'll be absolutely delighted. Um, but um, so using fantastic SEO and, and working out how best to present your, your business in a press release, it will only work if that's genuinely correlated with real turnover growth. So there are, there are signals that are very, very honest, and there are signals that are not, not so honest. Mm -hmm. And things like Twitter is a very, well, it's very easy to game. So a lot of Twitter is robots talking about various things. Um, a lot of the internet, actually, um, web traffic in general, is, is people trying to game the system somehow, or machines sending a lot of traffic to certain websites. Um, so it's part of our job is to work out which signals are very, very important. And it could be SEO, but only if that genuinely correlates to turnover and increased revenue over time. OK, thanks. Thank you. Can we take another question? Hi, my name's Steve Lowe. Uh, talk about Hi. gaming your system. So, mm. so how does your algorithm infer growth? Well, so, so what we do is, I mean, the first thing to note is that we have a really good classification system. So this allows us to work out what type of business you are. Because different signals will be differently important to different businesses. So for example, Google has a really linear relationship between website visits and the amount of revenue they make. But an oil and gas consultancy, for example, will have almost, well, they might have some relationship, but it's likely to be much more fuzzy. On the other hand, Google has a really, really fuzzy relationship between employees and revenue. On the other, but a, a consultancy of any kind tends to have a very linear relationship between employees and revenue. So it's, it's about understanding the, the type of the business, and then you, can understand, then you can work out how that correlates to turnover. We're very lucky in the UK that we have one of the best sources of private company financial information in the world. In fact, I don't think growth intelligence could have emerged anywhere else. Because it's very open, because it's very full, comparatively, um, it allows us to work out how accurate we're being. So every, every month we check all of our data against what companies have actually filed about themselves. Of course it's historical data, but our signals are historical too. So it allows us to gradually get better over time. Hi, my name is Mark. Um, how do you vet people in terms of access to your system? So I'm thinking purely data protection. Take, I don't know, defense mm -hmm. or and logistics, i.e. There's a lot of sensitive components being shipped around. You're tracking that stuff to work out what a company's doing. Doesn't that give a, a signature as potentially something that you don't want to know about? Or potentially those people don't want you to know about? Well, very interesting question. I suppose... So you could misuse that, right? We possibly could misuse the data that we're using. The data that we expose to our clients isn't the raw data, generally. And so they don't tend to see exactly what this company has been importing and exporting. Our model sees it, but our end clients don't. And in fact, what our model is, where our model is taking the information from are generally open sources. So most of the information we use is, is open source information anyway. So you could, you know, you, as I said you know, at the beginning, a human being could, in theory, gather a lot of the information that we gather. It's just how to make sense of that. Uh, hi, my name is Patrick speaking very loudly. Um, am I right in thinking that this would be built off a, a tool like Lucene Solo? If not, um, what sort of proprietary tools do you have internally? And um, it seemed like you have an advanced taxonomy system underpinning this, but mm -hmm. the results that come back are highly structured. Mm. Do you have a way of pushing unstructured results and data back to your end users as well? Yeah, I think, I, so very interesting question. So to, to answer the first part of your question first, um, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, our CTO, he's probably the better person to, um, to uh, answer that. I, I know some words. Um, I know we're using Python, most of it's built in Python. Um, we also use Elasticsearch a lot, which I think is built that on That is uh, based off Solo, yeah. yeah. Sorry, okay. um, we, use a lot, we use some in-memory databases so we can serve out a lot of this data quickly, and that's actually related to the second part of your question. So the ideal in, in all business intelligence, how, how do you want to access very, very complicated information is to give someone an overview of all the information and then to allow them to drill down in the way that makes sense to them, makes sense to them most. That's something that I would... So I have an ambition to represent our data in that way 
at some point. In fact, we have, a, we have a prototype which allows you to see growth across the UK. So we're representing it as circles. So you can have a timeline along the top which goes from the past to the present. And then as you move the slider, different areas of the UK kind of increase and decrease the circles of aggregate revenue within them. And then you can drill down and see sectors within that, drill down and see product types, client types, sales process, and then companies themselves. Um, but ultimately, I, I'd love to do something like, um, I'm not sure if anyone's seen the CNN ecosphere, which is just the most awesome kind of representation of millions and millions of tweets that came out of a climate conference as one giant tree. And then you can drill down and see the tweets that are relevant to you. It's super cool. But I think probably um, you know, in a while. So and, and lastly, we're, you know, join us. We're always hiring. So if you know someone that might be interested in working for a company that's working with lots of big data and has worked with Python before, then we're always hiring. I'd, I'd love to speak to you afterwards. Tom, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.